for that. Now, I, my daughter, uh, we were talking the other day, and she said, Dad, you're just intense. So, um, with that being said, I've been known to be loud, so uh, you might need to adjust if you need to adjust. The uh, Lord spoke to me a couple weeks ago, and I started uh, just a three-part series at the church. Uh, three things that Jesus did in the upper room for the church, did for us. And the first thing is, and I'm just going to hit on it briefly, and we're going to be in John 17, 20-26, but in the introduction, I just want to begin that Jesus said, it's good that I go away, because if I go away, I'm going to send a comforter to you. And we need to understand that that is a significant event in our lives. If you're saved, if you're born again, you have Him living inside you. And we as Baptists get scared when people talk about the Holy Ghost. And we think we're going to roll around talking to tongues, foam at the mouth. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being sealed with the power that God has equipped us to live the life that God has called us to live. And outside the Holy Spirit, we can't do it. Nope. Jesus said, it is good that I go away. If I go away, I will not leave you comfortless. Right. And if you do a study on this, it's a legal term. He is to help you navigate through your life. Let me tell you what, in his credentials are awful good. He carried Jesus wherever Jesus had to go. He never failed Jesus. And I tell you what, we'll never carry the weight that Jesus did. That's right. But when Jesus was baptized, he was given the Holy Ghost. And he said, if I go away, I'm going to send this comforter to you. And that's a promise to us as individuals, and it's a promise to the church. And then I want to talk about, and what I want to deal with tonight is, I want to talk about the prayer that Jesus prayed for the church. That is so cool when you think about it. When you think about what God has done in the upper room 2,000 years ago, Jesus looked through eternity and seen Clear Creek Baptist Church. He's seen us in 2016 and He prayed for us. You, you, we need to think about that for a moment. He gave us in the upper room what He needed to give us. He was fixing to go to the cross and die. As far as we know, the, if you read the Gospels, there's more written in the upper room than there is anything else. I believe that was... And why? Because it's significant. Because there he, he pours into those 12 men, those 11 men, what needed to be done. He's fixing to go away. He's fixing to lay some stuff on them that they really need to do what God called them. He says, I'm going to pray for y'all. He said, then I'm going to pray for the others. And where are the others? And I believe he looked to all eternity, seen every man, woman, and child that would ever be born, ever come into the kingdom of God, and he prayed for them. And uh, uh, believe in the election of salvation, if you get saved, then you were elected to get saved. So Jesus prayed for you. And we need to understand that. And God equips us. God never intended for us to live this life outside the power of God. Amen. And we need to understand it. And there's a reason that he equips us with the Holy Spirit. That's so we can all be unified. Because let me tell you what, the son never lived in disobedience to the father. Right. And let me tell you what, the Holy Spirit is never in disobedience to the son. He's always in subjection to him. And that should teach us something. That if we're all pointed in the same direction, we're doing the same thing. I listened to Lou Holt speak one time at an event. And he said uh, he was training, training the offensive line. And the right tackle wasn't doing his job. So he told the right tackle, he said, just go sit on the bench. Just go sit on the bench. And then the left tackle, he came through that door, through that hole, and smoked the quarterback. Every single time. Why? Because there was a hole there. The team wasn't unified. And we have to understand it. And what he's trying to tell us, one of the things that he's telling us, that he prays for unity. He said, I... Him and you, Father, and you're in me, and I want them to be as one as we are one. And when we start being one the way that God has called us to be, the church starts showing the world who God is. That's right. Everybody knows what the church is against. It's time for everybody to know what the church is for. Yeah. There's a church on every corner, but there are dead churches all over the place. And if you do a study out there, you know how many churches they close every year? Five, six hundred a year that are closed. And I figured that one time, and it was like 40 churches a week that were being closed. I talked to a DOM down in Greensboro somewhere, and he said, I don't even have to look up how to close a church anymore. He said, I can do it by heart. 
And that wasn't a brag, but that is a reality, church. Why? Is it because God's dead? Heavens, no, God ain't dead. But do we act like he's dead sometimes? But he prays for the unity in the church. He says when the church becomes unified, then they will know that I am real. That is a powerful statement, church. I was talking to my church this morning. We had a cookout yesterday, and some of the guys were fussing about we had <laughs> we didn't have any Duke mayonnaise. We had Hellman's. I told them fellas they need to get right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's, <laughs> and it was a big hammer about. And that's okay. We can get disagree about if you, uh, you know, if, I know there's some Carolina fans in here, poor things. If y'all get right with Steve, you get right. <laughs> but you know, all that we can have fun, in, and it's okay to disagree on that. Granddad, D, uh, Homer's dad. I love Granddad Death, and I love to get all the, the watch the brothers get around Dad talking. And Granddad believed when you died, you slept. Granddad was wrong. Granddad's in heaven walking around with Jesus right now. I believe with all my heart. But those guys, when they'd get around the table, and they would have a discussion. Now, did they have different views? Yes. But at the end of the day, they loved Jesus, and they believed that the lost needed to be saved. They believed the same thing, but they didn't get there the same way. But they loved one another, and they got along. See, there's some things that we need to get over, church. And number one, we need to get over ourselves. Amen? Amen. So in introduction, if you have your Bibles open to John 17, you would stand and open, stand for the honor of reading God's Word. Sit John 17, 20 through 26. He says, Neither pray for I these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they may be one, as thou, Father, are in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory that which thou gavest me I will have given them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, that, that the world may know that the that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known me, but I have, but I have known thee. And these have known that Thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them Thy name, and I will declare it, that the love wherewith Thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we thank You for this night. Thank You for this church. Thank You for this opportunity. We pray that You just be and lift the scales off our eyes and apply the, uh, the balm of Gilead to our eyes so we might see what You would have us to see tonight. And these things we ask in your son's precious name. Amen. Please be seated. Remember, Jesus has prayed for you. And any time that I think about God praying for me, that just gets my motor running. I can get plumb excited about that simple fact that 2,000 year, years ago, God looked to eternity and seen me and prayed for me. Church, what more do we need? In the beginning, He created it all. He created it all. He created it all for Him and by Him and nothing was created without Him. Amen. And if that's the one that created it all and He prayed for us and He said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly, the church needs to quit acting like God's dead and we need to get on with the program. We need to understand it. We live it if we are living in the last days and, and, and I'm not going to live to, I don't know how old I'm going to live. But, you know, if he doesn't come in my lifetime, I'm living in my last days. Yeah. I want to make sure that when I stand before him, I want to hear, well done, good and faithful son. My earthly father didn't give me much attention. Mom's boyfriend didn't give me much attention. But I have learned that I am accepted in the eyes of my father. And the beautiful thing about that, we're all accepted in the eyes of the father. Why? Because of the cross of Calvary. Amen. He's prayed for us, church. He prayed for them. <laughs> them 11 knotheads 
Peter who, who, you know, he stuck his foot in his mouth, denied him three times. Thomas, doubting Thomas we call him, he prayed for him and he used them 11 men with their faults to turn the world upside down. He can use us in our faults to turn our world upside down. The, the world needs the church to grab hold of the, the truth and who we are in Christ Jesus and the church has been prayed for by the Master Himself. Amen. You know, you're not here and you're not saved because you want to get saved. You didn't think one day, oh, I'm just going to get saved. Uh, that's, right. that's a lie out of hell. If you got saved, God saved you. God purchased you. He sought you and He bought you. He romanced you into the heaven. You're going to get saved if you wanted to. You ain't that special. I've got a daughter sitting here alive. She's precious. My children are precious. But God had to seek them out and save them. Not anything that I've done, but He had to do it. He loves my youngest more than I love them. And He loves us as much as He loves the rest of them. So why don't we grab hold of what God has done? He prayed for His church. Then He prayed that we become what He wants us to do. And He's going to tell us. He tells us He wants to live us. He wants, to, he wants us to live in unity as Him and the Father did. Do you always see that God the Son always compliments God the Father and God the Holy Spirit always compliments the Son? <coughs> always. He has no will of His own. He's a slave. And we're a slave. We're bought into the kingdom of God. And we're bought with a purpose. To live in unity. Yeah. Just as and you think about Christ's work, He's fixing, he's fixing to go to the cross. He's fixing to die. And He wants to to give these men what they need to go on. He wants to give His church. He wants to give us what we need. Hold on to it, church. He says that they, that they all may be one, as that Father are in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. Do you understand it? God the Father is inside God the Son, and God the Son is inside of me, and we're all together. And we need to start looking at that. That they lived in unity, and if we say that we're in unity, in unity, John said they will know that they are my disciples if they have love for one another. Amen. We don't act like we like each other most days. Amen. But the Baptists are the world's worst for fighting. I can say that because I am one. Been one since I got saved, I reckon. <laughs> but I believe that. But I believe also it's time to put some of those things behind us. The world's going to hell in a handbasket and we're fighting about the color of the carpet. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in all my life. Who cares as long as it's red, right? <laughs> y'all need to make sure y'all are awake this morning. Tonight. That they may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. You understand that's Jesus' will for us to be one with the Father. And one with the Son. And live in cohabitation with the Father and the Son. And, and Him living through us. And the only way to do that is He's got to be in charge. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to have it any other way. There ain't but one Lord and there ain't one but King of Kings. And His name is Jesus. Amen. And we all need to live in subjection to Him. Yeah. That's how we get one with, with God the Father and God the Son and start living together the way that He's called to live us. And there's a byproduct of when we start doing that. And the byproduct of us start loving each other the way we ought to love one another. That the world may believe that Thou hast sent me. When we start living the way that God has called the church to live, the world will start understanding who the church is. But let me tell you what, you can get five people in the room and they'll have five different opinions on anything. But now when you get those five people in the room and they start getting along, something starts to happen. And let me tell you what, marriage is a hard thing. For two people to get in the house and live together for 50 years, it's hard work, amen? Amen? How do you do it? Jesus is in charge. Happy, happy life, happy wife, you know, just the way it goes. But we have to understand how does it work because I live with Christ as the Lord of my life and my wife lives as the Christ as the Lord of her life and we get along. Why? Because God makes it work. And when we come into church, we take the same principle. If God is the Lord and the King of all of us, then we've got to get along. We've got to. We've got to. He doesn't have it any other way. 
the world will see who we are when we start loving one another the way that we ought to. Start getting along. That's what the Bible says. He said the world will believe that God is who He says He is. Christ is who He says He is. When the church starts becoming and start getting along the way they should. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I tell people all the time, you know, we've been around the world and you talk to people and you say, now, there's a lot of things I said, but you, you want to lay down some principal facts now. You have to believe that the Bible is the Word of God. From Genesis to Revelation. Amen. Written by the Holy Spirit. That Jesus, fully God, fully man, born of a virgin. That He laid, that He lived a perfect life. He was fully God, fully man. Died on an old rugged cross. Laid in the grave for three days. Rose and ascended on high. And He's coming back for us again. Amen. If we believe those things, we can get along. Yeah. Yeah. The other things is just minor things. You understand? You, if you want to believe the earth is a million years old, that's fine. I believe it's about 15,000 years old. But you have to believe God created it all. Yeah. Right. Whether it's a million years, a billion years. But you have to believe God created it. I didn't climb out of pile the booze. Your great-great-granddaddy might be a gorilla, but not mine. Dumbest things that you hear. And then he said, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. God has given us the ability to live in unity, and that brings glory to the Son of God. Why? Because there was glory when the Son lived in obedience to the Father. That ought to be exciting. us. God has given us the ability, and we shine the glory of Christ. When the church becomes together and starts doing what the church is supposed to do, live in unity, we start glorifying the Christ. And I love Jesus. I'm crazy about the man. You know, we talk about two men loving each other. They're talking about his being gay. No, let me tell you what. That's a godly thing. I love my father-in-law dearly. He got a raw deal when I married his daughter. He had to disciple me and train me all at the same time. I was rough and scary when, when he first met me. And I was scared to death to ask him to marry his daughter. But not that I was scared of him, but I had an awful lot of respect for him. He said we was doing something one day and he was having a bad day and we was remodeling an apartment. And he said, Dad's having a bad day. I said, he can't eat me. <laughs> I think he heard me. He just laughed it off. I've always respected my father and I love him dearly. But there's nothing gay about it. And I have men that God had brought into my life that I love dearly. You know, I have a friend of mine down in Blake County. He is, his son is dying with Lou Gehrig's disease and I love Mr. Kenneth to death. Uh, if he wasn't tied up with his son, I could call him tomorrow, broke down the side of the road, and he'd say, be right there, son. I love him dearly. We don't always agree on everything. But I love them dearly. We need to love each other in the church dearly. Yes. We love it. You know, love is, is unconditional. Yeah. You know, and we need to start understanding that. It doesn't matter what team they like, what kind of car they drive. It doesn't even matter what kind of mayonnaise you like. <laughs> but the thing is, you've got to love Jesus. Amen. We've got to love Jesus. And we've got to stay letting some things aside because let me tell you what, the world around us is going to hell. In the state of North Carolina, I think there's 9.5 million people. 6 million unchurched. We're losing, church. We are losing and we ought to be winning. Why? Because the church won't live in unity. He says when the church is unified, then the glory of God will show up. Then the world will know. They will know that I am real. Yeah. At the book of Ephesians, if you want to put one title on it, it is the glorious expression of who God is. And the church is the glorious expression of who God is. Now I know that churches close all the time and this happens. That doesn't change the fact of who God is. That's right. And it, it says that the church has walked off and left God. Yeah. See, we're, we, we do far too many things what man can do inside God's church. 
We ought to be doing inside the church the only things that God can do. The explanation that the church exists should be only that God shows up every single Sunday and does what needs to be done so the church stays open. And we ought to be at the altar every morning begging and pleading God show up. Show up and show out in the church so that the world might know who He is. My God's not dead. He's alive. Woo! He's alive. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. You kind of get that thing? Jesus is trying to tell them that we need to live unified. We need to, to fall in line. You know you're not going to look like me. You're not going to smell like me. You're not going to like the things that I like. But let me tell you what, we got to love the same Jesus. Amen. I've stood in, in a tent in the, in the jungle in South Africa and be the only white guy in there. But I can worship Jesus with them. Because my, with, my spirit bears witness with their spirit, so I get along with them. No, I don't understand everything that's going on. No, there's a whole tons of difference. But we serve the same God. And that's where we need to understand it. Your journey is not going to look like my journey. It's not supposed to. It ain't supposed to. But my belief should be the same as your belief. The foundationals. If the foundation is there, we need to learn to get along. Let the little things go. Let them go. It says, I and them and thou and me, that they may be perfect in one. That the world might know that thou hast sent me. That the world might know that God is real. The world might know that he sent his son to die on the cross. The reason the world doesn't know is the church don't get along. Everybody knows what we're against instead of what we're for. Amen? We need to start acting like we're somebody. We need to start acting like we love one another. Why? So that the world might know that the Son is real and that the Father sent Him. That's how five people get along. That's why, that's why a husband and wife can be married for 50 years or 65 years or 100 years, however long it is. We married for life. And the only way that you stay together is by the power of the Holy Spirit. The only way, the way that we make it in the church and, and make it with individuals that are hard to get along with is by the power of God. Sin covers a multitude, uh, love covers a multitude of sin. Right. But we need to love one another. Your neighbor in your pew is not your enemy. Satan is the enemy and he goes and destroy. And when he starts destroying the unity in the church, God isn't glorified anymore. And then he ain't going to put up with that mess. And we'll fight amongst ourselves. we got to remember who the enemy is. The person in the pew next to you or across from you or on the other side is not your enemy. The devil is the enemy of the church. And he would rob and steal and have them destroyed every day and he's doing a fine job of it. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to take it back. Mm -hmm. It's time that we read what God has prayed for the church. The promises that I'll be with you and you and me and I and him. I and them and thou and me that they may be perfect in one that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. God loves us as much as he loved his son. That's what Jesus is telling us. Church, my father loves me. This I know. The Bible tells me so. We need to act like it. You understand when I am loved, and, uh, and when a woman loves a man, he can do anything. He can scale mountains, leap tall buildings. He can do whatever needs to be done if a woman believes in him. But now when we start believing that God believes in me, I can do a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. When God, and he does. He believes, he loves me. He loves me. And there's enough love to go around. Yeah. There's enough grace. Grace. Grace is so clear. I and them and thou and me that they may be perfect in one. That the world may know that thou hast sent me. And thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. God said of his son, he said, this is my son who I'm well with. He gave his son his seat on his right hand. 
he gives his sons pull ahead when his son walks. The son has the ear of the father. He has the keys to heaven and he has the keys to hell. He has the keys of life. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me. See, the thing that we need to get over, we're, he we're headed for heaven. We're headed and we're destined to be lived forever with Jesus. Now, what are, are we going to live in light of what God has done for us? See, so many, so many people wrestle with the fact. Uh, I was talking to somebody who wanted to speak in my church. They, were, uh, they work with the rodeo. And I said, how do you know that you're saved? Well, she said, I hope that I can get there. I said, whoa, wait a minute. I have a no-so religion. You understand? I know beyond the shadow of a doubt when I step out of this world, I'm stepping into the next. We need to get over that stuff. That's, we just need to get over it. Salvation is a free gift. I didn't do anything to earn it. And if I didn't do anything to earn it, I sure can't do anything to keep it. And if I had to earn it, I'm in a world of trouble, people. I'm in a world of trouble. So we need to live with the fact that we're in, on our way to heaven. And we need to live unified so that God can do what He wants to do in the church. If we don't have the 10 or 15 years left in the church to do what God has called us to do, don't we want to reach the loss? God said it's not going to happen until we become unified Amen. as God the Father and God the Son are. Mm -hmm. And He said that's my promise to you when we start to love. And it has to be a love relationship with one another. I believe that with all my heart. And you will say, well, I love my neighbor. Are you, do you love them or are you in love with them? So, well, what's the difference? If I have to tell you, then you don't know. If I have to tell you, then you don't know. If I'm in love with somebody, I will give my all to them. There is no cost that I will not pay there is no distance that I will not go for the one that I love mm -hmm. without her ever having to ask me to go. To love somebody, you'll go along just to get along. Mm -hmm. But you'll only give just enough. And I believe that it's time the church quit just giving just enough. Amen. Give it all mm -hmm. to the glory of God. So that the world, mm -hmm. you know what's at stake? The lostness of the people Amen. around us. That's right. At the end of the day, you can have your way or God can have His way and we can make an impact on this community, on this state, and on this world. What are we going to do, church? You already know you're going to heaven. Let's get in the ranks that God has called us to ranks. Form the army that He's called us to form and let's start marching towards God. To my home. Amen. Start marching in unification. One purpose. Under the Lordship of Christ. Not, not underneath the pastor. But underneath the great shepherd. That's right. Amen. We're just his messengers. We're just men that stand in the pulpits. And get to deliver the message that he's called us to deliver. It's not my message. It's not your pastor's message. It's his message. <coughs> we need to stay unified. So we can become the army. God would have us to be talking. If everyone would stand all heads bowed, all eyes closed. Church, if we're